Well, you're all very, very welcome here. So I say good morning to you all. And morning. delighted that you've been able to come. And we're going to talk about animal communication today. Anybody that has done, would say, yoga or a lot of meditation will find it quite easy to be calm in themselves. And this is one of the main things with the communication. You've got to be calm. And if you're not calm, you cannot hear what the animal is saying. You cannot feel what the animal is saying. And this is how they communicate with us. They communicate with us through pictures, through feelings, and through words. And the other thing you need is love. Love conquers everything. If you love an animal, it will communicate with you. So you have to tell them that you love them. And if you're telling them lies, they will pick it up in the energy field. But Sorry, Lynn, do animals have a spirit guide as well? They do, yes. Okay. Because I tried to communicate with my cat the other day, yeah. and I saw like steam rising above his head as I yeah. thought, yeah. and then there was something behind him, um, like a sort of a mist, a, like a bubble of mist, yes. Yes. and that was moving. So I thought, would yes. that be his spirit guide or could somebody's? Could be his spirit guide, yes. Yeah. Or it could be his energy field as well, and you're okay. communicating with them as well. They're usually delighted, you see, when you communicate yeah. with them. You can, you can see it in their, in their faces, they, they change. You say, oh, yes. You know, so at last somebody hears me. You know, so it's lovely, actually, when you do communicate with them. And as you say, you could, you could see spirit yeah. with them, which is wonderful as well. We all have spirit ones. People call them guardian angels. People call them spirit guides. Everybody calls them different names, but it's the same thing, really. I believe we all have telepathic um, telepathy within us, but because we've never used it, it's lying dormant within us. We speak verbally, animals speak telepathically. And telepathy is uh, with pictures, feelings and words. So we just use the words, but they give us everything else with it and we have lost the connection with them. So it's like, as a learning another language, learning Spanish or French or anything like that, you need to practice it. So once you start practicing it, it starts to flow. And you can, can correct a lot of problems, not correct, but you can find out why the problem is there. And then you can help correct it. And the, usually the problem is usually with the owners. <laughs> Not with the animals. Mm. Something that we're doing. And in terms of uh, children, Lynn, I mean, I've I work a lot with children. I've yeah. observed that little children, before they even begin to speak, just when they're talking jibber jabber, and mm. they know what they're speaking themselves, that I've often seen them sit down, say, with a little dog, and remembering one particular incident, and the child there just yapping away to the dog, and yeah. the dog responding, and it's like they were communicating in their own way. Yeah even though neither was speaking yeah. English yeah. Uh, as such, uh, but the little child could get their message across and the dog could get its message across. And I just thought how lovely that the child is just so open. And I, I suppose we have to become almost like little children again to open at that level, uh, I imagine, to be able to communicate with the animals. Uh, but also I would see a great benefit in children um, learning that little bit more, you know, as they get older. Um, to learn the communication skills mm -hmm. as well because they would have it very naturally then throughout their life mm -hmm. and they would have that great respect and empathy for animals as they grew into adulthood. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we know that animals do communicate with us and we've put away those conditionings that we were reared with that animals don't communicate. And like as you said, Yvonne, young children communicate, they're communicating with them on an energy level. As you say, you could see that within them. So if we could encourage that instead of closing it down, as we were all closed down when we were younger. So I'd like people to encourage the children to communicate with the animals. And I think once you realise the animals can communicate with you, the whole relationship changes. Um, you know, I have no animals myself, but I'm lucky enough to have friends who have pets. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll go down and mind them while they're off on holidays or if they're gone somewhere. And you just feel that energy when you go in and they're delighted to see you and you're delighted to see them as well. So I guess from my point of view, I'd like to work with healing with the animals and be able to help them more and not just to, to talk to them, but mm. to be able to do something practical for them also. 
um, and that's where my love for the animals is now. Yeah. So it's, it's an amazing experience. Yeah, Luca. Here we're coming in now. This is Luca. Oh, would you like to come in? Yes, yes. Let's sit. Good boy. Good boy. Hello. Right, we're going to start working now with Luca. Uh, he's a standard poodle. He is uh, very bouncy, big, and very joyful, and a very, very happy dog. And he loves doing this work. He loves teaching people. So I hope you're all ready for him now. Mm -hmm. And remember what I said earlier, when you get yourselves nice and calm, we're going to communicate with him. He will communicate with you with pictures. Mm -hmm. Now, in order to get the pictures, you'll have to close your eyes. And the other one will be with feelings. So you'll know, check your own body for any aches or pains that you might have in your own body so that you'll know that this is mine, it's not his. And if he gives you a feeling of pain anywhere in your body, you will know that it's his. And just to make sure, in case you have a pain in your own hip and he's giving you a pain in your hip, make sure to ask him, check with him that is this, are you showing me that you have a pain in your right hip or your left hip or your front paw or your back paw? And then the other thing is words. But remember, the words come in so fast because as soon as you ask the question, he's picked up on it and he has answered it. And it comes in so fast that you might have missed it while you're thinking of the question that you're asking. Take him a minute or two to sit down. He's going around saying hello to everybody. Yes. So when you start the communication with them, Remember to get yourselves nice and quiet and still. Mm. And I'll ask you to close your eyes when you're doing it because in order to see the pictures that he's giving you, you have to close your eyes to see. Mm -hmm. It's the same that I have, which is peculiar, but uh, it works. <laughs> you close your eyes to see. So now would you like to start? Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So nice and calm. Everybody nice and calm and relaxed. You ask him, does he like living here with me? Or you ask him to show you where he, what he sees when he's going on his walks, when he's on his walks with me. You ask him, does he like the cat? We have a cat called Beppy. And I ask him, does he like the car? And I ask him, does he like vegetables? Alice, how did you get along with that now? Were yeah. you, were you, did you hear it, feel it, see it? What way did he? I could feel it and yeah. hear it from yes. Luca. Yeah. So I felt he's very happy. Yeah. Um, and he loves going out for his walks. Yeah. Um, and that he's happy to go out in the car as well. Great. And yes. that he gets on well with Peppy. Yeah. yeah. And he just that's the really happy feeling I yeah. just got off yeah. him today yeah. that he was very <coughs> happy to let us work with him. Yeah. Yeah. He adores the walks, yeah. uh, and you walk in a field. Yes, we do. Yes. Uh, there's a little bit of shrubs or a coppice somewhere or other, but yeah. it's, it's mostly along a field, and, and yeah. there's crops uh, growing somewhere or other as well. Yeah. Uh, carrots came up. Yes. yes. We yes. love yes. carrots. <laughs> yeah, we adore yeah. cooked carrots. Well. Yeah. 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 So I mean, I, I mean, there was this explosion yeah. of orange in my face. <laughs> <laughs> carrots. Mm. So, uh, no, it was generally, uh, no, he's a very happy dog who adores living with you. Yeah. <laughs> Brings you so much closer to your animal. Mm -hmm. It's an added dimension in your life, isn't yes, it? Yes, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know, instead yeah, of just talking to people, yeah. you get to talk to animals. Well, and I mean, and it's a completely different experience. Yes. And it's, it's amazing, yeah. isn't it? Yes. yes. <gasps> 
you teach us so much. He gives you the answer while you're, you're halfway through the question. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. I saw carrots and I also saw a field and a gate and sort of trees or something yeah. along the side. Yes, that is true. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It took me a minute or two to slot into the right place. Okay. The first yeah. question or two, yeah. um, I, I think I might have been trying a little too hard. Oh, and then when you asked the picture where does he like to go for a walk, yeah. before you had finished the sentence, yeah. I could see a little river and green field yeah. and it was just bright green and, and I took that that was the answer. Yes, um, is, the same as everybody else, I got carrots immediately yeah. when you asked about the food. Yeah. And um, <laughs> then it was more hearing, um, telepathic hearing, yeah. Yeah. when you asked about the car. Yeah. And he just said, of course, I love it, it's my favourite place. And <laughs> And I just go, oh, right, okay. <laughs> so I got it in pictures and then in words, yeah, yeah. Um, and which was lovely. And he, his voice um, that I, I was hearing telepathically sounded very young and bubbly and um, excited. <laughs> On a practical level, then, are you ever asked to find animals who've been lost? You know, somebody, a child's pet, yeah. or an elderly person who's had a dog yeah. for years and years and the dog goes missing. Yeah. Are you ever asked uh, to help in those cases? I am, but unfortunately, um, lost animals are the most difficult to communicate with mm -hmm. because they're so stressed. And now I have found a few, but that was because what the animal was showing me, the owner was able to recognise. And then I would ask the animal to wait until the owner got there. But mostly, they can show you what they're seeing, but if the owner cannot um, connect with that or know where it is, it's very, very difficult. Mm. Very, very difficult. And because they're so stressed, uh, it's very difficult to connect with them as well. Mm. Even though you're trying to help them, they are so stressed out being away from their home. And now look, this is for being such a good boy. This is your reward. A lovely little toy for you to play with. And I want to thank you for communicating with everybody today. Now, good boy? Good boy. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Luca. <laughs>I got midnight about about three years now and um, he's 21 this year so he's um, not a young horse but when we got him first it got very hard to load him. I was only starting horse riding and I was going over uh, to a local place to do riding lessons and um, it took about three or four people to load him so with Lynn's help anyway she came over and um, did her, her bit and uh, we were able to find out the reason why he didn't want to enter the horse box. Uh, which is basically the his previous owner used to forget the horse box was behind the tray or the jeep and fly around roundabouts and of course horses um he'd be thrown back and forth so he was just not very happy loading so lynn reassured him that i wouldn't do that and thank god touch wood since then we've had no problem she came, she came two or three times then wasn't yeah, it she did, yeah. Yeah, she did. and also she, she discovered really then he had an abscess on one of his back teeth as well which I didn't know about and we got the equine dentist out to fix that as well so all happy. <laughs> I had gone about three or four months trying to load him and trying different ways and means and I said I'd be open for anything so um, it was just as I said I just happened to come across Lynn on the website and um, um, obviously you will be skeptical but uh, no it came fine. <laughs> she, she proved, she proved herself and I have a few people here with me today and I'd like them to um, connect with them and see uh, has he any problems today, has he any aches or pains or anything else and that would be nice and um, to get them nicely relaxed and to get everybody around nicely relaxed to make the connection with them. Mm. Mm. I was just um, communicating with the horse um, and I would have in the past maybe had a fear because of their size so I was just saying you know now I'm, I'm happy to be around him 
and I was saying that I want to work um, with the horses and help and the animals help heal them and he was saying to me that's nice and he said that he has irritation himself and I felt like itchy or sore um, irritation under my arm oh, wow. so I wasn't sure whereabouts it was and he was yeah. trying to show me it's on his left side Just that he, he has. Is, because I was saying earlier on he is 21 and he okay. is a bit of inflammation with age and that, that he yeah. is on medication for that, oh, that he wow. does get quite a bit stiff every day especially now that riding and that so okay. there you go okay. you're spot on. Okay. I didn't get anything in particular apart from the fact that he was very happy that we were all here and sort of mm. felt I'm the center of attention as I ought to be. Uh, it was it was actually rather nice. I, I haven't uh, communicated with horses before. For me it was a very different experience as well. Anybody else? What did you... I didn't get anything in particular. I was just feeling his joy again at everybody being here. Yeah, I didn't get much either. Just that he's happy and he likes us being here. And I, I haven't been really near a horse before. And he's very calm. I thought I wasn't picking up a whole lot. And I thought I was a little bit nervous. But I'm just wondering, was I picking up on the feeling of the horse? It was like in the belly, um, like a nervous type of feeling and um, a little bit of anxiety. So I don't know whether that was then something he was releasing mm. or it was me feeling anxious. How would you know the difference? It's how you feel it. Mm. Were you anxious yourself? I wasn't at the time. The time. Yeah. No. Yeah. Maybe well, then it would, it would be his. It would okay. be his. Yeah. Mm. That's what I was explaining. If they're showing you the things in your own body, mm. um, make sure that they're not yours. Mm. And then you ask them, is this what you're showing me? Mm. This is what I'm feeling. Yeah. just to check out that it is theirs and not yours. I just think when you tune into their energy, um, it just, just comes to you very easily what they're trying to say to you. It's just to, to take it, not to sort of guess are you hearing them right, just to go along with what they're trying to tell you. Because I could actually feel an irritation under my arm and I haven't got an irritation before I came down. So obviously he's trying to show me and make me feel what he feels. So it's just interesting to, to follow that up and realise, well, that's something he has a problem with, so then you can help them. You can maybe get them help with that. But beautiful animal, absolutely gorgeous animal. Lovely. Yeah, yeah, he's very, he's unusual. He's a caramel colour, which you don't get some wall-eyed, they call it. So. He stands out from the crowd. Yeah. Even though he's mature, but... Yeah. He knows it too, he's nearly winking <laughs> when I'm saying about his eyes. I was just trying to get down to her level just to you know, not the horse is quite taller, so yeah. not to be so tall. She's very preoccupied with yeah. food, you yeah. see. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's food is much more communicate with you. Yeah, she's. Yeah, so I'm hungry. She, yeah, she's <laughs> one of these animals that you'd want to wait till she's asleep, really, to get a good communication yeah. with her. And there is a lot of animals that like that. Mm -hmm. Like, if you want to communicate with a horse and he's going out for a ride, he won't. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. there's just other things that that are more important exactly. than communicating, you know, like mm -hmm. going for a nice gallop. Yeah. And, uh, that's how she is now at the moment. Mm -hmm. She's more interested in food and mm -hmm. attention than in communicating. Yeah. So uh, to work with a photograph with her would be, that that's the best thing to do with her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When you're working with photographs, you think back to the indigenous tribes they always maintained they didn't want their photograph taken because you're taking part of their soul. So when you're working with the photograph, the energy of the animal is in the photograph. So it's important that you have no other people or other animals in the photograph and that their eyes are clearly visible because in this work we regard the eyes as the windows of the soul. So that's how we work with the photographs. It's the same energy 
the energy is in the photo, so it's wonderful to work with. And plenty of peace and quiet is, you know, far easier than being out and about at times. It's much easier to work with the animal when you have peace and quiet. Because if they're going to be fed, or if horses are going to be fed, or dogs are going to be fed, or being brought out for a walk, they just don't want to communicate with you at that stage. They're too busy doing other things that they enjoy doing, rather than communicating with you. Once you have a photograph, you can communicate with an animal the other side of the world. There's no problem with that, you know, but it's just their energy that you're working with. And I encourage more people, anybody, to get yourself quiet at home, sit down and um, listen to what any messages that the animals have for you. And I'm sure they have loads of loads. It's like if you were learning French or German, or any foreign language, you wouldn't be able to learn it in a day or two. You'd have to start practicing. And this is what the animal communication is. Practice, practice, practice. And the reward at the end of it will be well, well worth it.